many of them have you wasted your money on because they didn't work? In today's video, we're going to explore how to actually read your labels, how to know what's on there and if it is going to work for your skin. Instead of relying on some salesperson to tell us what our skin needs, we are going to get educated so that we can get empowered and make the right decisions for our faces. As you probably know, after stepping into any store, products come in so many variations that it is overwhelming. Although I've been in the beauty industry for over 11 years and I've studied both chemistry and the science of skin, I can still walk into a store and feel overwhelmed because there's so many choices. And especially for somebody who doesn't know the difference between an OTC product, a cosmeceutical, and regular skin cosmetics. Heck, how are you supposed to make any decision? You go to somebody who's a paid salesperson to get some advice, but they don't always know what they're talking about. If you know what you're talking about, you'll know what's right for you. When it comes down to reading your labels, the first thing you see on shelves is the front of the package. It says what it's supposed to do. It might say made for a certain skin type, such as acne or sensitive skin, and it might even have some beneficial ingredients, such as some vitamin C or some ceramide. I want you to do one thing. Stop reading the front of your labels. I don't care what this says. I want you to turn around and look at this area, the ingredients list, because that's what's going to tell us what's actually in our products. For instance, did you know that many products might claim that they have some special ingredient, but there's less than half of a percent in there? They're selling you some fancy cream for $400 that has seaweed in it, and yet it's basically fillers with a little bit of an active. In order to prevent being ripped off and to get products that actually work for your skin, we gotta know how to read these puppies. Every single product that's sold here in the USA has what's called an ingredients list. And they're actually listed from highest concentration to lowest concentration. So what's first? There's gonna be the most in there. Now, there is a catch. Once you hit that 1% mark, brands can mix them up in any order. And this is permitted by the government because it's considered a trade secret so that nobody else can steal or replicate their formulas. But for consumers, it also means that we need to be a little bit on guard because we have to see if the hero ingredient that they put on the front of that label shows up before the 1% mark. Now, if you do turn over those products, you might notice something. You might notice something called active ingredients. Why do some products have active ingredients and others don't? Well, when it comes to products that we can buy, there's a lot of different types. Some of them actually have chemicals that are regulated substances, meaning they can't be sold in high quantities. These special substances, whether they're natural or chemical, have to be listed as an active ingredient. These are things such as salicylic acid or hydroquinone, and they can only be at a certain percent. For instance, if salicylic acid goes above 2%, it cannot be over the counter. You actually need a prescription for it. Now, any of these products that have active ingredients are called OTC products stands for over the counter. And it means that there's an active, something that acts like a lower form of a treatment or medication that is proven by the FDA that this ingredient is known to produce some sort of results. All of these are OTC products. And if you have the active ingredient in a higher concentration, it's what's called a prescription. Now there are also regular skincare cosmetics and cosmeceuticals. So what's the difference between a cosmeceutical and a cosmetic? This gets tricky because if you're not an informed consumer, you can really waste a lot of money and a lot of precious time on your skin. Cosmetics in this case do not refer to makeup. They refer to any skincare product that has basic ingredients. We're talking things like a moisturizer that might have mineral oil or shea butter. We're talking about a toner that might be alcohol or witch hazel base. Cosmeceuticals are a little bit different because these are the products that have high quality ingredients that are not controlled substances the way an active ingredient is. These would be some over-the-counter retinol products, such as this one, which has Bacuchiol. These would be products that have an acid, like glycolic acid or lactic acid. These are ingredients that are a step above the rest, but they're not so controlled that they're considered OTC. And for me personally, this plus over-the-counter is really the sweet spot, because I know that something that I buy out of this category actually has beneficial ingredients and some science to back it up. There's also one piece of advice out there that I think is ridiculously stupid. Some people say, if you can't read the label, don't use it. No, 
If you can't read the label, that just means you haven't learned how to read the label. It doesn't mean that it's bad or toxic. If this is food, it's different. But for skincare, guess what? Plants and even natural products have multiple names. For instance, did you know that tocopherol acetate is just vitamin E? Citrus pardasi is just grapefruit peel. And mentha spicata is just spearmint oil. If you can't read the labels, it just means you haven't learned how. And later on in this series, when we get into the chemistry of cosmetics, you're going to be able to not only read these labels, but actually know what all of these different ingredients do. So now that you know how to read these labels in order of concentration and also turning them over, totally disregarding what the front says, I want you to keep in mind something else too. If you're able to read these ingredients and you know which ones work best for acne prone skin versus which ones work best for anti-aging and wrinkles, you'll be able to completely ignore the fronts of products. Just turn them around and know what this is going to be best for. Again, I don't care what the front of the box says. I want you to start getting warm and fuzzy with these words and start to understand what they mean, because this will be the key to unlocking your skin success. Lastly, you might see a couple symbols on some of your products, such as the symbol of organic or cruelty-free. These, of course, are good to know about, but they're also pretty self-explanatory. Any of these labels are usually things that are from a third-party company. For instance, if you want to have an organic seal, the company actually has to go to somebody else, invite them over to their lab and their warehouses and say, hey, we'll pay you to look at our stuff and tell us if it meets the certifications of organic. If it does, they can pay to use that seal on their products. Same with cruelty-free. We're not just gonna take a product's word for it. They actually have to pay someone to come out, check out their facility, and make sure that no animals are harmed. These are important to look for, and they're definitely an added bonus on your products. But remember that all of these different things, such as a B Corp or cruelty free or fair trade, are added bonuses. They talk a little bit more about the process that happened with these ingredients and not what the actually ingredients are that will be on your skin. So in today's video, we learned quite a bit about our products, how to read these labels, how to avoid being ripped off, and what the differences are between OTC products, cosmeceuticals, and just regular products that we're putting on our skin. In future episodes, we'll discuss the details of these molecules, which I am so excited about, and how they actually play on the playground of your face. And of course, dive into the epidemiology or the rhyme and reason as to things like acne, wrinkles, how they form, and how these products can help or hurt you. So go ahead and use your motor neurons to tickle that like button, smash subscribe, and the ding dong notification bell. We post a new skin science video every single Saturday at 11 a.m. And I want you to get empowered and inspired with me here every single week. Stay hydrated, remember to be beautiful, and I'll see you next Saturday in Skin Science.